<laughs> so anyway, exciting stuff. We have got the brand new R5 Mark II and the US R1. Uh, we don't have the US in R1. A, in a cutaway. Yes, boom. But it's exciting new stuff. More bodies to play with, so... R3. Of course, we've got the R1. Yes, that's the new one there. What else we've have we got? We've got the 1DX as well. Ah, uh, yeah. It's much more heavier. Yeah, it's old tech. so much more heavier. There's quite a bit of vibration yeah. there. You forget how much vibration there is. The R1 and R5 II have landed in their 24 and 45 megapixel glory, respectively. Here's a look at what's new and what's not. We have got a comically small table as well to put all <laughs> these cameras on. <laughs> it's precariously wobbly. We locked, went to the event. I didn't go to the event. I, I, I was busy. I was busy. Busy washing my hair. Anyway, um, R5, R5 II. The body looks kind of similar. Oh, this button. Yeah, it is a bit weird before with the R5, the uh, on-off buttons on this side, so you can't turn it on single-handed. Yeah. And also, before that, you have to use a mode button to change still and uh, move it. But now you have this, and this. You just turn it on single-hand. They're actually a little bit thicker, I just realized. Because they got a new cooling thing design. Aha, I can see right there. So there's a little bit of vintage here yeah. and there, but there's no fan inside, right? No, not inside, outside. <laughs> I mean, one of the things with the R5 is that when it came out, it was like, oh, wow, AK. AK. And then people and start then, oh, to realize that it overheats. It like overheat even in 4K. When you just look at the camera, it overheats. So you had a whole day with both cameras. Uh, yeah. Did you manage to kind of shoot with it for a long time? I, after I back to the hotel room, I tried a little bit of overheating test okay. without the fan. Yeah. It still overheats uh, when I shoot 4K. It still overheats, as I remember, around 40 minutes, something like that. I'll correct it later if I... Um, the thing is, that at that time, my, the battery is low, so I plug in a USB power. I don't know, does it affect the cooling, but it's just that it, uh, if you need a USB power under around 22 degrees, yeah, right. it will overheat. If you put it down, a low wind, yeah. So with this, did it improve? Well, I haven't tried that, but, um, but they claim that with a fan, 4K should be low restriction. That's you can, it, it won't overheat at all. 8K, 30P, it should take 120 minutes or longer with the fan. Right. So I think at least they offer a solution. In theory, you could just get a handheld fan and stick it here. Because they do have like uh, this go in here, go out there, and then yeah. inside there's some graphite, whatever, heat dissipating um, right. technology design. So it should okay. be better even without a fan. Are you sure it's graphite? Because when you said graphite, they graphite. looked a bit puzzled just now. Uh, this is just a pronunciation. <laughs> Oh, sorry, one more thing, the cooling vertical grip doesn't have the vertical button. What? So you don't have these uh, vertical buttons. Oh, on no. The, yeah, only the other two. Oh, what? This is mainly for video then, this yeah. grip. So it's not just a fan, it's a, it's a battery grip as well. You can put two batteries. Yeah, somebody's totally going to make <laughs> just the fan, because I think some people will just be wanting the fan. Because when you put this on, it makes it significantly larger. And that kind of defeats the purpose of a camera like this, isn't mm -hmm. it? Just to add the fan. Fujifilm did it with the X-H2S where they just had on the <laughs> back. That looked really third party. Yeah. But it's not. So... I mean, they were brands that make a fan that you put at the back anyway. So when these have an actual tunnel, the channel, not the tunnel, for the, for the, for the yeah. cooling, then definitely there are third party fan coming. Yeah, or you can just get a handheld fan, and just, just like that. Mm. <laughs> get your dust blower and just continuously blow. They also got uh, eye control. Yeah, they had that with the R3, didn't they? Yeah, but now it's even on the R5 Mark II as well. 
but it's supposedly improved, isn't it? Because when I tested with the R3, I didn't think it was very good. But I think some people say that it takes some time to get used to. It's, it's that the detection is double the frame rate. They didn't say what the frame rate, but it's double that compared to the R3. So it detects your right. eye. Yeah, um, twice as fast. Yeah. Oh, something interesting, the black out free display, you can yeah. turn it on or off. I can't see any difference. It has a blackout when you first take a shot. Maybe you're right. The difference the first is frame. the first frame. Yeah. Black out free off, it flash, but black out free on, it don't flash at all. Yeah, so both of them are blackout free EVFs, just with the different resolution. So R19 something million points is the same as, I think it first appeared on Sony A7S Mark III. The one on the R52 is no slouch either. It, it is one. Is it 5.7 million dots? Yeah, five, five point something. So R3, R3 and R1 are quite similar bodies in a way, aren't they? Quite a lot are similar between the R5 Mark II and R1. They both stack sensor. They yeah. both have the accelerator. The Digic accelerator with the Digic X. Both of them have that. So it's not too dissimilar in a way to a Z8 and Z9, is it? Mm. But, but it do have a mechanical shutter. It's kind of interesting that they still, if they say that electronic shutter is, is fast, actually faster yeah. in t than the mechanical yeah, shutter, yeah, 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 yeah. in terms of rolling shutter, right? Yeah. Then why bother with the mechanical shutter? Yeah, I don't know. But the electronic shutter, R1 can go up to 40 FPS, R5 Mark to 30 FPS, but raw. So they don't have like Lecon that, oh, you can limit it to JPEG, you can get faster first rate. No, it's still, it's just raw. 40 FPS and 30 FPS. So this does 40. If you're shooting raw, the R52 has a respectable burst rate. It's higher than the Z8 and Z9, but it's just that it doesn't have as deep a buffer. The 24 megapixel R1 can obviously do more, it's just not all that groundbreaking. <laughs> that's, that's the electronic noise, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> of course, as you said, mechanical shutter is still 12 FPS. Yeah. With pre capture, of course. Yeah. Pre-capture for stills is pretty standard for high-performance cameras these days, so it's sort of to be expected that these Canons have them. However, pre-capture for video is pretty cool. Video pre-recording is quite useful. So how many seconds? Five seconds. Actually quite That's useful. pretty good. Yeah. That's quite a lot. If you're waiting for something to happen, you can just let it have the five second pre-record. And then when it happens, just press it. And if you miss it, if you still miss it, then you've got a problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> if you can't react within five seconds, then there's something wrong with you. So although I say it's like the Z8 and Z9, it's kind of not because the R1 is lower megapixels, it's 24 oh. megapixels, which I think that's fine for sports photography. Yeah. Isn't it? it got in-camera upscaling. It got it used AI to upscale. The R1 can upscale to 96 megapixel. R5 Mark II upscale to 180 megapixel. And this is basically some of those AI upscaling you can use on desktop, but now you have it in camera. So it does this upscaling stuff with AI or whatever. Yeah. There's also something which they've called neural noise reduction, yeah. is it? Yeah, also AI noise reduction. Yeah. So it's rather than just reduce noise like before, it might soften your image, yeah. but AI might be maybe sharper. Okay. Another big thing is the auto focusing. They, they talked a lot about... Um, AI. Yeah. Because it has that action priority mode. When you turn it on, you can choose between football, I mean soccer, uh, volleyball <laughs> and football. basketball. Football. Yeah. But what, what about rugby? American football. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, and rugby. It's the same thing, but without armor, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's the next firmware update. Ice hockey. No, there'll be the R1 Mark II. <laughs> yeah, guess what? We've got ice hockey and American football. 
<laughs> the day before I tried yeah. this, uh, they have basketball, basketball player for us yeah. to, to try. Um, it's supposed to detect everyone in your frame, what everyone is doing, yeah. who has the ball as well. Right. So supposedly, uh, someone passed the ball, the autofocus would yeah. switch to the player with yeah. the ball. But when I tested yes, yes, not the day before yesterday, uh, I don't know, it just feels like the normal um, face detection. Did they say it's pre-release firmware? Yeah, it is pre-release. Zero point four firmware. Even though it's beta firmware, it should there should be some difference, right? But yeah. I don't feel much difference on the Canon's approach is that they're going for this kind of priority and sort of intelligent auto-focusing where it can just predict uh, things, the movement of people. If it works, if this works, then it, it is quite something. It would it would make it a very appealing camera. It's interesting. If they could apply that to other types of photography, then it, it, it could be an amazing thing for Canon. It also has a register face. You can register a face. You can register 10 faces and yeah. give them priority. But uh, I think it works better for me wedding because in the football field, when the player turn around, um, of course, you register just the front of the player's face. When it's sideways, then it don't recognize. Eventually, they're going to have to do this thing where they you have to ask the football players to do that uh, face ID. <laughs> like Can you do this? Can you do this before before you start the match? Just to do this and, and oh, oh, oh. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Get on the pitch now. I, I kind of appreciate that they haven't just said AI this, AI that. Mm. It's like <laughs> digit accelerator. Accelerated capture, yeah. neural, neural noise reduction. Yeah, it actually just That's... me making it easier. So, oh, AI, this AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't say that, did it? But you can use Squarespace's AI to kind of uh, design a website for you. Does it have AI? You better believe it. Recently, I've been looking at starting blogging again, obviously on Squarespace, and I noticed the build with AI feature. It makes it a lot easier to get going with setting up a website, online store, or a blog like me. Usually, there's a load of templates to choose from, but with the AI option, you click your stylistic preferences and choose what sections you need, then write a few words about yourself, and the AI will come up with some text based on what writing style you wish. And then it's done. Super quick to get a website up and running super quick to get a website up and running. Try it out with a 14 day free trial and get 10% off your first order with the link below and the code Kai. Okay, so it's got new subject recognition. It's got horse, it's got airplane and train recognition. It didn't show it on the menu. On the menu, it's just people, animal, vehicle. Yeah. But it's just part of animal and vehicle. These new subject detections were first seen in the EOS R6 II, yeah, I know these are none of the aforementioned new types of subjects, obviously. Whole area tracking servo AF is new. So you have an you have an area in the center and then you start tracking someone. Yeah. That someone can go away from the area. Right. If you turn it on. But if you turn it off, then it only has to be in that area that you choose. The R5 Mark II is sensitive down to minus 6.5 EV. The R1 7.5 EV kind of makes sense if that is the sport shooter. That one, they all look the same, don't they? Two stage AF on button. The AF on button is now you got half press. Yeah. You can set it up to half press for something, fully press for something else. Oh, okay. That's pretty much all to focusing, so it's been improved. Better when it comes to doing sports. And that's for both of them, isn't it? So uh, that's good. But as you said, it, it's uh, from your, your experience with the beta versions, it didn't prove to be that successful. But uh, I guess we'll have to find out when they have the final firmware. 8.5 stops of image stabilization. In the center, peripheral is 7.5 stop video. So they both do raw internal. Yeah. The only difference is the resolution. You get 8K, 8K with that. 6K, so it's 8K 60? 6K 60 with the R1. Mm. Which kind of makes sense because they've got different resolution sensors yeah. anyway. 
I find it quite interesting that um, R1, you can't shoot 6K um, with other format. It has to be 6K raw. If you shoot other oh. MOV, MP4, it is 4K. And then the R5 Mark II, you can shoot 8K, you can shoot 4K. Okay. All of it's full frame. Yeah. No cropping. Even higher than 60 frames per second, you can do 4K 120. Again, no cropping. Well, this doesn't have any kind of vents on the R1. No. Okay, so it have, in terms of overheating, is it? Uh, they didn't mention it right. on the R1. Okay. You know, what I care about is, is the rolling shutter going to be better than the A7 R5? To be honest, anything will be. But just looking at the screen, you know, with the A7 R5, you can just see it on the screen with the rolling shutter. It looks great with this. The dual shooting, I forgot to test it. Dual shooting is that it's limited to full HD, but when you're filming full yeah. HD, you, you can still take photos. You can still take JPEG photo. Uh, the video won't be affected, it won't stop, it yeah. won't shut, shut, shutter. Is it just taking like a single shot or can you take no, a burst? You can take a burst. Ooh, that's pretty neat. It could be useful for something, I, don't, I can't think of it yet, but you, it should be useful. Yeah, or something. Uh, YouTube thumbnails maybe, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> uh, waveform monitor on the R5 Mark II, yeah. but not on the R1. Oh, oh okay. Also got a false color support. Okay. Display. Yeah. Like those, yeah. Not only, not just Panasonic got waveform. But they had done the R6 Mark II, <laughs> didn't they? Wi-Fi 6E, Ooh. and then the R1 is 2.5 gigabytes per second Ethernet in camera. Dual threaded FP, F, 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 FTP F, transfer. FTP. But, oh, but on R5, you can get the cooling fan vertical grip. It still, it also got the Ethernet port. There, there are actually three different Grip. One is just a vertical grip, one is vertical grip with an Ethernet port, and then this one is vertical grip with cooling fan and Ethernet port. They, are, they both can take two batteries. I'm talking about the battery, so they use a slightly newer battery, oh, isn't yeah. it? The same shape, well, not the, I think R1. the R1. R1 battery should be the same as the R3, right? No, I think it's different. Oh, uh, it? If I look at the lump. Oh, it is. It's the same. Hey? How come I, I thought this was... <laughs> I have to edit well, the battery. Definitely on R5 Mark II, it's a different battery, isn't it? Um, they are backward compatible, yeah. but the new battery got higher power output. If... Uh, so with an uh, older battery, you can use an older battery, but some function would yeah. be limited, as they say. I haven't found out what's the limitation. Just less stuff anyway. But it's, it's useful, especially if you've got, I mean, with Canon cameras, you probably have loads, loads of, these. of these batteries. So, it, you know, if you're out of batteries with the new camera, you can use the old one. It's not gonna render the R5 completely old and useless. That pretty much wraps up all of the new stuff worth mentioning. Oh, well, and the multi-function shoe on both cameras. Seemed a bit hectic to try and talk about all of the new features of two high-performing mirrorless cameras in just one video. And I was a bit surprised they decided to announce them both at the same time, but apart from the megapixels, they really share a lot of similarities. I can't say too much, not having had the chance to get proper hands-on with them, but the exciting bit about both the R1 and R5 II is where Canon is going, with the clever focus stuff like the action priority. We'll just have to wait and see what it's like when the final firmware cameras are out. But for now, I think R5 Mark II and R1 are just nice cameras. They're just nice. That's my verdict. That, that's, that's all you need to know about these. They're very highly technical pieces of technology, but all you need to know is they're just very nice. <laughs>